Uh, just a disclaimer, I am going to try to do a live demo and the, the mirroring software that I'm using called Vesa or something, it's my first time using it, so if that crashes, it's not my app, it's, it's just a mirroring software that I'm using. Um, just to give you guys a really quick overview of Neura. Okay, so Neura, we are a machine learning company started in 2013. Today we've raised a little over $13 million. Uh, we have 40 employees. And what we want to do is what cookies did for your internet browser, Neura wants to do for your IoT. Um, all the all the devices in your smartphone, all the connected devices in your cars, your wearables, etc. And the difference being, right now with cookie data like Google or um, other people monetize off of your data. We believe that you should have full control of your data, and you should be the only person who's deciding, hey, where do I want to share this? And then if you want to monetize off of your data, somehow you can. But we believe that by giving you control to your data, you can start to create an ecosystem of technology for yourself where all of a sudden my smart alarm clock is making my life better and my smart glucose meter or my smart medication reminder is making my life better. It's not someone else's monetizing off of my personal data. So generation one um, was really about internet connectivity and remote control in terms of IoT. I uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background. Generation two, like the Nest thermostat, was really about scripting. Um, if this happens, then do that, right? Uh, very strict, rigid, defined rules. Generation three, which is what Nara is working on, is trying to understand what's going on with the moments in your day. When do you wake up? Because every day you kind of wake up at a different time. When do you leave for work? Because every day you leave for work at a slightly different time. Um, and then we, we have insights into these moments, and based on these moments, that's when we trigger the technology around you to respond. Um, so just really quickly, some in insights that we can share is how are you sleeping? Um, how well are you doing your physical activity, uh, your, your steps, your calories, your weight? Uh, a lot of these things have huge impacts on your health and also your uh, mental wellness, your uh, depression, anxiety, stuff like that. So we have data that can <coughs> surface and then you can connect to, say, your Fitbit or, say, your um, medication product so that everything can start working together to make your life better. Um, this is a graphical representation of how Mira understands people and the devices uh, that are in your life. And from this map, we call it SIA, Mira can start to understand the relationship that you have with your devices and also the relationship that you have with other people in your life based on the devices that you guys use and where you guys use those devices. And to me, this information is extremely powerful, right? Like, this is information that I should own, not information that someone else should own and then monetize off of. Uh, and then here are some use cases of what people are doing with Neura. So we have things as simplistic as hey, send me a push notification at the right time. Like, if, if you're a app developer, you guys have an app, you guys are always constantly trying to engage your users. Now you can send me a push notification when it's actually convenient for me to receive that push notification, not at 7 o'clock or some other arbitrary rule that someone has chosen. Um, another one that I really like is making sure my door is locked when I fall asleep. So that it seems so simple, right? Like, hey, my door should lock when I fall asleep. But the amount of machine learning and technology that it takes to understand when you've fallen asleep is phenomenal. But for me, when that happens, it's just like magic. Okay. I think now I would like... So, Mira, in case um, it's not super obvious, we are a SDK that app developers integrate and then 
we have a bunch of different events that, as a developer, you would be able to call. Um, we also do predictions. So we learn and understand your behavior, and then we can start to predict what the user is going to do. So if you're an app developer, um, this is really powerful because now you can start to anticipate for your user's needs without having to do years of complex machine learning to, to get there. You can automatically put this uh, functionality into your app. Um, and now for the scariest part of my presentation. So, this is an ad. We don't mean to. Uh, Okay, so uh, there is an SDK that app developers integrate into their own apps. I'm not demoing anyone's app up here today. I'm just going to show the Nura API sampler. And this <coughs> will just give you a little bit of insight into what type of data Nura collects. Um, and then it's really up to the app developer to, to figure out hey, for, for my user, how can I use this data to make their life better? How can I use this data to increase my user's engagement? Uh, so, for example, the events log, this is my data for over the last day or so. Um, it knows when I started, started driving, when I left work, uh, when I went home, when I finished driving, and then there's a history where, where I could search from the date range. Um, Something that's interesting would be my activity profile at a place. <coughs> I don't know why that's not working. Um, okay, so right now it knows that I am in place at this point of interest, um, and it has identified that, that it's close to Nokia, which is correct. Um, and I think I'm almost running out of time. Another one, I guess this is the last one. So it can look at uh, the number of steps I take, uh, how much time I spent driving, where I visited. Um, it knows that you guys are all seeing my address. That's, that is my home, and Neuro learned that information by, by itself. I didn't have to input anything for that. Uh, same with my work address. Okay, all right, and now we're out of time. Thank you guys. Um, yeah. And then if you guys want, uh, here's the website, and here's my email address. Email me any questions you guys have. Uh, this information, is that stored locally? Uh, a portion of it is stored on your mobile device, and a portion of it is stored on our servers, which are safe. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, if you guys are interested, in, we've, we've written like a privacy best practices white paper that I'm happy to email you guys. Yeah, that's just the German speaking, you know. Like, <laughs> Boris paranoid. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I like to to your point. I think it's huge. Like. We should own our own personal data, especially because once you start understanding, like, what am I doing in the world? Where do I live? How am I interacting with things? Like, I should have control of that, not not a company that's trying to sell me ads. But then the data is on your servers, though, is it not? Yes, but we don't monetize off of it. I think that's the distinct. That's the differentiation. Um. What's your business model for this? Are you charging consumers to personalize their outer net, or are you charging the app developers, or a combination of both? Um, we have not quite figured out what the business model will be. Um, we just know that we don't want it to be a ads-based model. Um, we believe that there is enough value here where a consumer could say, hey, I want to own this data, and by accessing my data, I can help all the different devices around me work together better for me as a better assistant. Um, so there is some value in that. And then I think for an app developer, because you have these incredible insights on your user now that like before you wouldn't be able to have, so that now you can um, build a better app that will increase engagement or increase monetization or increase conversion, there is value for the app developer as well. 
So you say you have SDK, you have for iOS, Android, and the JavaScript. <coughs> Yeah, uh, we have it for Android, we have CocoaPods for iOS, uh, we have plugins for Cordova, Corona, and React Native. Are they open source so you... <coughs> uh, are they open source, uh, your SDK? Uh, it's not fully open source. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and type for some like Yeah. Um, right now, our SDK is uh, available for anyone to, to try for free. Okay, um, we'll so if you guys are interested, now would be the time to do so. Do you get data only from the uh, from, from the phone sensors? And does this require keeping your keeping your phone on your person at all times? Uh, yeah. So so the question is, do we only get data from the phone? And is it required that the phone is kept on the person at all time? Um, right now, the majority of the data does come from the phone, but as a developer, you can add your own third-party devices. Um, and, and as a developer, you can take the data that Nora provides, and if, like, if you're a developer with like a hardware device, you can also incorporate in that data, and then um, you can create your own unique insights on top of it. So the phone is a major portion of it, but it's not the only portion. So you don't always need to have your phone on you. Okay. Um, one more question. I have one minute left. So does your app like uh, talk to the home IoT devices? Or uh, like you, you mentioned one case where you said that you want to make sure that the door is locked before the fall is deep. Mm -hmm. So are you like talking to say a August door lock system or something like that? Yeah, so um, <coughs> Nara is a SDK that a app developer would integrate. So if the app developer decides to integrate Nara and the app developer chooses for that app to also talk to the August lock, that would be 